ago, talked about this fight, then the fight went away, and now here we are talking about it again. So just real quickly, the time frame of this, you first found out that the UFC wanted you to fight Tony Gaethje in kind of late March, right? Early April? Yeah, it was like, I think it was 19 or 20 days before the fight. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Late March, so, late March. so you you immediately jump into camp after having a conversation with Trevor Whitman, and then uh, on April 9th, no, on April, yes, on April 9th, they canceled the card. So, yeah. can, you, can you let us know, like, like from your from your point of view, did you know that the card was in jeopardy? Did you know it was getting canceled? What, what, where were you at when you found that out? Man, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard as a fighter to find out information on the internet, but that's essentially how I find out everything. I was downstairs, I had just got a sauna uh, put in my house, I was putting it together. And I walked upstairs and someone was like, do you hear that? Or did you see this? And I was like, what? They're like, your fight's off. I was like, shut the, f let me call my, oh, sh shut the heck up. Let me call my manager. And I call him and he's like, yeah, it's off. So it's like such a, like emotionally as a fighter, it's very hard to cope with, you know, because it's, it's hard to turn it on and it's hard to turn it off. So I was really caught, you know, in a weird predicament. Um, I'm glad it was only three days, three, four days after they canceled it where they, where they re, we announced it, and I also found out that I was fighting again on the internet. And so it was tough. Um, you know, I I kind of definitely let my foot off the gas uh, for three days, but it was ultimately it helped me because I, I had gone like 14 when I when I got the call, I went 14 days straight. I didn't take a day off. I didn't take my Sunday off. Uh, so I was really feeling feeling beat down. And so those three days really helped me. Um, ultimately, I'm not going to get my training camp, but. You know, I'm gonna get more time and I have to be thankful for that. Yeah, when you say you, you took the foot off the gas, what does that mean? I mean, because for, for different guys, that means different things. Like they go straight to a fast food joint, you know, and, and load yeah, up on something. that's what I did. <laughs> that's yeah. what I did. I ordered pizza up for breakfast, had ice cream for lunch. Yeah. Only two, I only did it for two days. Um, didn't help my weight, but I was happy. Huh. Do you, uh, I mean, what was your feeling initially at, you put it into words the the emotions of like you you've trained for 11 days and you got this opportunity of fighting for a world title and then all of a sudden your buddy tells you the fight's canceled like like what went through your your mind oh, at that point so in that position for me it was really weird because you know it was like um it was the saddest most relieving thing i you know i've ever experienced you know i really wanted to but once i turned it on you know i was, I was all in and then when they called it off, it was kind of a relief because essentially I wasn't getting the time I needed or wanted. Uh, it wasn't the circumstances that I preferred. But you know, I uh, luckily I've been I've been training and sparring, so my body wasn't my body wasn't bad. I was able to get down to 67, 68, no problem. That day we talked. That was like 10 days after I started working. Wow. So I've really, um, like I said, I was telling myself all year, I was like, you're gonna fight a game, it's gonna be huge. So, you know, don't let it get, don't, don't go, don't get out of shape. I wanted to be at a point where if I was going to go into camp, I wanted to be in shape, not take the first three weeks to get in shape, to be able to put my body through what I needed to put it through. So I was very fortunate to, uh, to have, you know, in hindsight, it was very, very preferred. I mean, the fight's right around the corner. He says, you know what? I've decided I'm going to spar for this, and I'm looking for people to spar with. If anybody here would like that job, please raise your hand. But I, nobody else knew that was a joke. Because, Errol, if you do look at some of his training videos, the one thing that's missing in the videos is a coach or a partner or a gym. I mean, he's in the garage somewhere. He's out skateboarding. So he's always all by himself with somebody with a camera. And you do start to believe, is this just marketing? Is this gamesmanship? Because come to think of it, I don't know what gym Tony Ferguson belongs to. And I've been friends with him for 10 years. Come to think of it, I don't know who coaches him aside from Eddie Bravo. And I've been friends with him for 10 years. And you do start to look at it and wonder, look, is this guy disciplined? Is this guy doing something that's so bizarre that it's going to last for a little while, but probably not for a world title fight? Then you see something like this, where he goes and makes weight, showing that yes, he is disciplined. Yes, he is focused. And by the way, when he got on the scale, he had a team with him. And that is relevant because that's one thing that you and I privately have wondered. Does he have the right team around him? It turns out the answer is yes. Yeah.
Why did you make the decision to, I mean, a lot of people don't want to travel right now. You know, Justin, I'm sure he's, he knows how to train. He's a veteran, but why did you feel like you needed to go out there and be a part of this physical camp? You know, I, uh, I talked to Trevor Whitman. I know Trevor for uh, 18 years and he used to be one of my coaches. And how's like, listen, you know, we have to re three weeks to train. And uh, what do you think about bringing uh, Kamaru Usman, UFC World Champion, and Benil De Rouge to kind of very much, you know, they two, they long guys. They close to kind of Tony style in a way, range-wise. And uh, Travers, you know, one of the best coaches in the game, and he's very open-minded. And um, you, know, you know, I told my family, listen, you know, I gotta go spend one week with, uh, with Justin Gaethje, and I brought uh, Benil and Camaro uh, and myself here to help him train and you know, uh, go over certain things. And Justin, all the time, one week before a fight, he always comes spend one week with me or two weeks with me in Vegas, and we always, you know. It's a workout together and help reach out and uh, under the supervision of Trevor. And, uh, and and we come here, man, and uh, yes, you know, Benny's been giving uh, Justin some great sparring, some great grappling. Kamaru yesterday sparred with, uh, with Justin, did uh, two, three rounds. And uh, and I'm gonna tell you something, uh, I'm very confident. You know, I, I watched this round with Benil and Kamaru. He went five hard rounds. Uh, Neil Magny, you know, uh, a lot of these guys give him great looks and he looks great, man. Even in the grappling aspect on Monday, we went to over to do a lot of things and um, I'm very, you know, I, I, you know he, he'll, you know, he'll be ready. <clears throat> who, who would you lean to? <clears throat> excuse me. Who would you lean towards in in that fight if it were to happen? Uh, oh, for, forget it, forget it. Adesanya whip his ass. Really? That that confident on the feet? Yeah, or, what, or do you, just do you think? Do you think uh, Tiago Santos beats Adesanya, or do you think that Dominic Reyes beats Adesanya? I mean, these were really close matches for John Jones. I thought he lost both of them on the ten nine must system. I thought he lost to, to Santos too. I'm not bullish on that. I'm not even bullish on the Reyes one. Those were just my opinions. I, I think that I think that ship has sailed. I think John's tough. I don't think he's the greatest of all time. I think that's George St. Pierre, but I do think that John Jones would have an argument to the toughest of all time. To watch his grit, to watch John Jones seeing everything slip away and he finds a way to, to get victory anyway, he finds a way to push through. John gets a lot of credit with me. I just think when you're comparing him to Adesanya, Adesanya's one. Jones is in a good spot, but he's still...